Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. What's a cool. jiggle? Let's focus, let's focus. <laughs> Welcome to Trending SA. It's great to have you along for the ride. It's Pride Month, and uh, of course, we are celebrating Pride Month on the show mm -hmm. this entire month. It's. Mm. So, check this out. Hashtag Fees Fall popped up on my timeline because October marks exactly five years since the student led protests erupted right across the country. The Fees Fall movement brought institutions of higher learning learning to a standstill, if you'll think back to that time, and students from all walks of life came together and they had one common goal, and that was to have free, decolonized education that would be accessible to everybody. Really noble goal. Yeah? Now, the protests led to loss, displacement, trauma, and education system that needed to be re-evaluated. Yep. That was a big part of it. Sure. Many students were excluded and even jailed. It's five years on, and the question remains, will fees ever fall? And joining us to reflect on this movement is Mkebo Tlamini, who was at the center of the protests. Welcome to Training SA. Uh, thank, you, thank you for having me and greetings uh, to everyone on the show. Thank you, Mkebo. Mkebo, uh, yeah. but the CIA's impact of this aftermath, the Fismas 4, um, yeah. that it had on you as somebody who was in the four front of the movement. Gikumbula kuna la kunwa kata mka kwen putwam we pet jam kerea. You know, so good good le five year commemoration. How do you process uh, basically how, what does this movement signify to you today? Well uh, look uh six months fall really caught everyone off guard. Even mm. as as student activity. Mm. We wouldn't say that we had planned and we had uh, 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 an eyesight with what will happen and, and you know, when it, we treated each and every day as it came. Mm. But more than anything, this must fall was a reaction. Mm. The students were frustrated and the frustration has been going on for a long period of time. Mm. Now, it was either we fight or we succumb. But the problem is that the, the tuition fees were so high and they were already increasing them in that we, we said in the next year, it means there won't be poor students, especially black students in this campus. Mm. So we had to fight. Mm -hmm. Now, we were like people who were demonial possessed. Now, because when you are fighting for life, mm -hmm. you give it your all. So that was what was happening. And uh, it happened that the cries were, were the same across the board. Yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah, we, we, we fought, but uh, uh, we are still suffering the, 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 the consequences. And, and that's the point here, Mkrebo. Uh, we have seen that fees have not fallen. It was a revolutionary moment, though. What did the movement achieve, and what is the way forward? Well, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, we, we, we never achieved anything because mm. uh, Christmas fall was, uh, was, was broad, as an umbrella. Now, under the umbrella, there were a lot of aspects, like the, 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 edu the decolonized education. Now, we, we also spoke of access to, to this institution. So we also spoke of insourcing of workers. Mm. We also looked at uh, uh, academics. The, 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 we said we need more black professors. Mm -hmm. And then we need universities to invest in academics and, and push people into PhD and all those kind of things. We also looked at accommodation because they, we, we, you can't separate teaching and learning and accommodation. You can't be sleeping in the toilet and then uh, be expected to, to, to do well academically. Mm. So it's broad. So we dealt with a lot of things. But remember that um, a, a, a university life is three to four years. So we can't cling on to power like uh, some sure. of our leaders that you will still be fighting the same thing for the longest of time. And the police brutality did kill the momentum. In that when they dealt with the student leaders, arresting them and expelling them, those who remained were scared mm -hmm. and it did lose its momentum. But I am of the view that we did achieve 
If the need door, the achievement was small, yeah. but the country was shaken, it will never be the same again. Uh, and, very, and very quickly, I just want to jump in. In terms of then making sure that, yes, you pick up on those issues, you've lost momentum, how to then revisit that momentum and make sure that you push and, uh, you push and change all those other structural issues? If you can, very now, briefly. The, yes, so now the, the thing is that most of us are no longer in those spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, we graduated and we left. Others never uh, graduated. But wherever we are, because remember that I said to you, this must fall was as a result of a reaction. The students were frustrated. Sure. They were oppressed. They felt like they couldn't breathe anymore. If the system is still the same, it will prove another leader okay. that will take another revolution. Absolutely. Because once they can't breathe, they will erupt. Right. As long as the system continues to oppress, there will be a reaction. Whether tomorrow, and now some of us have taken a, a, a position of writing articles, and we are teaching, sure. we are conscientizing, we are planting a seed. We don't know where it will fail, but Fantastic. soon we hope that uh, it will touch the right uh, uh, mind. Thank you, so much. To, to, yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much you. for your time this evening, Debo. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Thank you Take for care. having us. Thank you. All right. From one serious story to... It's called Light and Shade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just two weeks leading up uh, to the U.S. 2020 presidential elect uh, election, Kanye West has finally released his first campaign video. I'm so excited. Um, it highlights his 2020 vision. Take a look at this. To contemplate our future, to live up to our dream, we must have vision. We as a people will revive our nation. Hmm? What's in the put? What? What was? <laughs> what was happening? Like no, we're reaching across the divide and we're embracing our, each other as fellow human beings, but underwater. You know what I mean? So it's like water represents emotion oh. and stuff. It's not for you have to wash your hands with COVID. I don't know, man. <laughs> Guys, it doesn't end there. It carries on. We as a people are called to a greater purpose than ourselves. We are not only a beacon to the world, but we should be servants to each other. To servants to each other? Guys, do you know I stopped understanding Kanye West after... This, the third album, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I, ne I never understand what's going on. I, I, I don't know what this man is about. And they're speaking to the world propaganda. We're not buying it. We have the news here too. Oh, we can see what's happening there. <laughs> what's and happening you've got very real problems. Also, I'm just not going to take motivational advice from somebody who said slavery was a choice. Actually, Ooh. actually, let's see the on. rest of it. Yeah. We will build a stronger country by building stronger families. Families are the building blocks of society, of a nation. By turning to faith, we will be the kind of nation, the kind of people, God. Oh, right. It's quite interesting that he's playing in that far-right Christian, like, ambit of influence, and I find it incredibly scary and problematic. But knowing the sort of thinking that goes behind it, I like my access to healthcare as a woman. I like my right to choose. I like having autonomy over my body. And right there and then, if you weren't convinced that having a rapper for a president is a problem, that just for me do, doesn't. Do you, know what, do you know what irritates me about this fool? Mm. Ooh, what fool? No, 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 he yeah. is. Do you know what irritates me? Right now, Americans are facing one of the most defining elections that have ever come, up, uh, come, come forward, sure. right? We don't need the vote to actually be split. Do you think the vote He's, will actually be split? And I say this of a country that yeah. voted for Donald Trump, yeah. right? But do yeah. you honestly believe Are the vote Are they going to vote split? for that? I, actually, people might. Yeah. That's the scary part. People might actually vote for him. And if they do, then they deserve what they get. Same with Donald Trump. <sighs> but you're not, and we've had Donald Trump for four years now. Imagine four years of Kanye West. Ah! No, 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 guys. Um, we, we must take responsibility and be adults. When you have the right to vote, you have the responsibility that you will get what you vote for. It's democracy after all. We're exactly. all adults in the room. You turn 18, you can make up your own mind. Have your cake and nom nom nom. Eat it. <laughs> after the break, we are joined by an activist human rights defender and the founder of Access Chapter 2. Steve Letsike is in the house. 
and we are going to be asking some tough questions, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still tuned to Training USA in case, you know, maybe you just joined us now. Share your pride stories on all of your favorite social media platforms and include the hashtag Ta Pride. We'd love to hear from you. Now, our Pride Runs campaign, Ta Pride, is in full swing. Tonight, we are joined by a woman who is advocating and championing the rights of the LGBTQI plus community through her NPO, Access Chapter 2. She brings awareness to the struggle of queer people and celebrates their diversity. In her work, she's been a catalyst for change mm. and a pioneer mm. who's devoted her life to shifting perceptions about the LGBTQI plus community. Now, in our conversation with her, we're going to be taking a look into some of the issues that have plagued the community and how we can start to address those issues. She is a feminist, a human rights defender and activist. I am talking about the spectacular, the incredible Steve Litzke. Welcome to Sa on 3. Thank you. Such thank a you. pleasure to have you here. Really, thank you. And good evening to your viewers. You know, Steve, as we celebrate Pride Month, I'm struck by this thought that we might not be doing the movement justice. Yeah. For many people, it's an opportunity to just have a party, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. But are we, are, we, are we aware of the fact that there's so much work still to be done? No, indeed. Uh, look, to many, it's about life, it's about existence, resilience, mm -hmm. and to be who we want to be anytime. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think we are not doing justice enough. 30 years since the first Pride yes. March, um, which was led by incredible Bev DC and Simon Coley and many other yes. activists. Uh, but here we are 30 years and even 26 years uh, in democracy. Rights are not a lived reality. Mm. Mm. Not a lived reality. It's interesting um, timing that we have you on. The Methodist Church of Southern Africa released a statement a few days ago right. in which it seemed they reaffirmed the rights or affirmed the rights of LGBTQI plus South Africans within the church. Mm -hmm. What did you make of the statement? And is this, um, is this truly a step in the right direction? Look, you know, we can recognize pockets of excellence, mm -hmm. but we need to recognize as well what needs to be done. Mm. You know, for so many aching years, there has been so many injustices, mm. prejudice, and the church is also at the center of this. Mm. And if we are to be talking about love, love comes with equality, love comes with responsibility, mm. love comes with affirmation. Don't give people half the bread. Give them the bread that is not tainted with coloring. So it didn't go far enough, in your opinion? I don't think so. I don't think religious leaders are prepared enough to take responsibility to reflect mm. on lived realities of many and diversity. And they must be bold. And if there's failure, mm. that we can't be bold to say, look, we are talking about human beings and we're talking about God and God who is love and God has not compromised existence. <laughs> wow. Uh, I saw something that I didn't know existed. Um, I was very confused. Uh, on the 11th of October, uh, it was National Coming Out Day. Yeah. Um, should we be having something like Coming Out Day? I don't know. I, for me, it was very confusing. I was, do, you, do you believe in the concept of coming out? Look, coming out means a whole lot of things to many people, mm -hmm. right? I think mm. coming out to self is the most paramount mm. of it all, right? Um, I think heterosexuals are enjoying privileges, sure. right? Mm. Yeah. I don't know how many heterosexuals, I don't even think I remember any heterosexual coming out and saying, I'm coming out, I'm heterosexual, right? Sure. But here we are, but we've been talking about marginalized population, people who are actually led to live life of secrecy because they have to be marginalized, locked up somewhere, mm -hmm. right? To be themselves, and when they are themselves, they are challenged, killed, discriminated. Mm -hmm. So when we speak about coming out, it's actually the power of being yourself and being able to love and embrace others. And those who come out actually are then subjected to horrific things in South mm -hmm. Africa. And that's why that day is observed uh, globally. Mm -hmm. It's not only just in South Africa. 
it's really to affirm LGBTI people that okay. you are mm. and be who you are. Come out to yourself and be yourself. Love yourself. Mm. And the rest, they will be themselves. That's mm. a lovely perspective. You recently condemned the murder of Simangaliso Diasi, uh, which was a hate crime. Sure. We have probably one of the most beautiful constitutions in like on earth, right. um, very progressive laws, yeah. but somehow there's a hate crime bill that has been stuck in parliament for how long? It's almost two decades now. Yeah. Two decades. Yeah. What is the holdup and why do we need it? Right, policymakers are taking time and they actually are gambling with people's lives. Mm. I mean, here we are, um, you know, the president launched the whole gender-based violence sure. uh, national strategic plan. Um, there's three bills that are being discussed currently looking at domestic violence, mm. you know, criminal procedure, right? Why is hate crimes bill not part of that three bills? Mm. Because now one privileges of religious institutions center hate, love. What exactly are we promoting? And with our history of prejudice, where we hated people because of the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. We hated women because they are women. Mm -hmm. Now we hate LGBTI because they are LGBTI. Yep. So we actually continue to use certain institutions to promote hate. And this is contested because this is not a different or special law. It's actually an added law to the already existing criminal procedure, sure. right? To say what was the message? Because hate crime, it's a message crime to where people associate or express themselves with a particular group. Yeah. I love the nuance that you bring to, to that discussion, but also further saying that um, we need to look at who has a heavier hand on the scales of justice right. Yeah, right. rather than citizens. Yeah, and, and I mean, our constitution promised the whole world that we will treat everyone equal before the law, mm. but we have not done justice. Yes, recognize those pockets of excellence, mm but we have not done justice. For as long as that week you're talking about Smanga, mm. actually there were four cases. Yeah. Zwe in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, there's also uh, uh, um, Zanele in uh, Hazy View in Pumalanga. Mm. We were dealing with cases, four cases in one week of hate crime, brutal murders mm. of LGBTI person. Are we doing justice? No. Yeah. Stephen, what I want to know, um, I even tweeted this today because it was coming from another show that uh, sparked the, the conversation from right. the weekend. And I wanted to ask, um, Uguti, when someone is homophobic, mm -hmm. you know, maybe because you work in that, in, in that area, what's the end goal? Like, what, what are they trying to achieve? Look, I think homophobia, like I said, it's a message, sure. mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and we come also not only just with religion, culture, mm -hmm. you know, it stems with quite a lot. When you say it's an African, Steve knows no other continent than Africa. So, it must so be. what do you mean? Yeah. Steve, I'm going to ask you to put a pin in that. Sure. And we've asked you to be with us for one portion of the show, but we're asking you to stay with us because after the break, we're going to carry on this very important discussion. So stay with us and stay with Itza on three. Celebrating Pride Month on the show and we have an activist and an absolute leader when it comes to issues that face the LGBTQI plus community on the show. Steve Letziger is here and we've got a few more burning questions. Mobley? Steve, um, I'm reading here about Inglabalam, which is a campaign that mm -hmm. seeks to bring forth many wounds that the queer South Africans carry, often due to conversion therapy that's imposed to them by family members in the workplace, mm -hmm. um, in many other facets of life. Right. What, what is the most harmful effect of conversion therapy? You know, the most harmful, it's wanting to change people's lives. Mm. Um, here is your child saying, mom, I'm gay, daddy, I'm lesbian, mm. or I'm trans. Mm. Sure. And here you are, you actually want to change and you say it's not acceptable. That's harmful. And that's why in Balam, mm. it's actually speaking about the wound that is inflicted mm -hmm. because you're trying to you know, change somebody 
you're trying to convert them, correct them to what is believed by you and it's the correct way. Yeah. Steve, you know, when, what I never get when it, when it comes to these things mm. of conversion, uh, I always ask Kuti, who do you know that was successfully converted? Uh, who do you know where these things have worked on? Because right. this thing has been around for centuries right sure. now. And there's no success rate yeah. in homophobia. There's no success rate in conversion therapy. Yep. Mm. So basically, people are just being violent and hateful for no reason. Because yep. there's no track record. We've proven that this thing works. Why yep. do people think people are still doing it? Heteronormative. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're thinking there's this perception that the only sexual orientation that exists mm. is heterosexual. Yeah. And on that point of heteronormativity, right? Allyship, huge buzzword yeah. in and around yeah. the LGBTQI yeah. plus community. Uh, you've got celebrities, well-known people posting the pride flag in yeah. October, all sorts of things. But actually, lip service. How do we ally properly for real yeah. for all those people who are stuck in that heteronormative framework yeah. i think we need to get away you know with the idea of a checklist right to what extent are we being inclusive mm. because why i you know even the notion of being inclusive sometimes is problematic mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. you're including who yes. for whose benefit mm -hmm. right so when we speak about the notion of equality it's actually making sure that you actually you progress in that. So you don't want just celebrities because nowadays even celebrities are a problem. I mean, we've seen with the <laughs> Fat Joe show, right? Mm -hmm. But here we are. We want people mm -hmm. to speak truth to power that recognize your own privilege to saying as a heterosexual, you don't have to come out mm -hmm. and saying I'm heterosexual, but others who come out and sure. say I'm gay, they are being bullied and killed. Mm -hmm. So. What do you do to be inclusive in workspace, in school, and everywhere else? Yeah. Steve, thank you so much for your time this so evening. Well, it has been thank an you. absolute education. Really appreciate it. And just like that, we have arrived at the end of another show episode of Trending SA. Tomorrow we're joined by the king of South African runways, Mr. David Lale, or should I say king, and the talented Karabon Tsuing takes the fourth seat. Good night, Mzansi. Night. See you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Let's do this again. <laughs>